Oh, we're live. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Welcome to the Unlearn Initiative with your boys, Andy and Scott, coming at you with our last in our series of this month on the topic of bullying. Why are we talking about bullying this month? Not that it's not important every month, but Andy, tell us a little bit about what's happening. Bullying Awareness Month. Bullying Awareness Month. And that's bullying is a subject that you and I know well based mm-hmm. on our life circumstances and the business that we run. Yep. Correct? So we've been talking about it quite a bit. As we build up our live audience on Facebook, uh, I got my man, Nicky Boy, as always, fan of the show. He's already on our live show. You see Nicky Boy giving us a little dash. See him. It's my dude. I'm going to be talking with him this week live. He and, Eric, he and I are going to get together on some things. Um, great guy. So um, he also knows about bullying because he's a martial artist and a darn good one at that. Mm-hmm. Not the biggest guy in the world, though. So he might have gotten bullied a little bit when he was young. I don't know. We mm-hmm. haven't talked about that, but we might, Nick. So get, get ready for it. But don't let the man's size fool you, though. Yeah. He come up on there on you with those. You ever see his cowboy boots? I think so, yeah. Yeah, his cowboy boot game is strong. <laughs> so um, we've got Kim online, too, as well. Uh, saying, hey, what's going on? Live shout out. Um, so we're going to give it a couple more minutes um, to build up some live people. Is there anything in particular, Andy, that's um, pretty awesome this week that we can talk about to keep everybody entertained? That's awesome this week? Yes. Well, Stranger Things is coming back. Stranger Things, the Netflix television program. Yes. I like it. I like it. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about some things, like the phone going off in the background. Forgot to unplug it today. Yeah, we forgot to unplug it. Could you go take care of that <laughs> yeah, real quick? Yeah, I got quick? you. Awesome. So I'm going to talk about some things. we got a couple of different things happening this week. Now, if you're in the local Clayton area, um, I'm going to be live on Country Super, Superstars 102.3 radio program with my man Buzz Berry in the morning talking about the subject of bullying. So Buzz is having me come in on the, uh, the show in between some awesome country tunes. We'll be talking about some, uh, some things. Elizabeth, what's going on? I see you out there live. Um, so anyway, so we're going, um, we're going live on the radio now, taking this message to a larger audience, not just our Facebook audience. And if it wasn't for you guys on Facebook and it wasn't for you guys listening to our audio show on uh, Podbean, iTunes, all those types of place, places, Andy and I might not have had the encouragement to continue going with this because now we're like 40-some episodes, right? At least, yeah. At least, so it's awesome. Um, so what else is happening this week? On Wednesday, a book drops. A book is released on Wednesday. Your book. My book. Yeah. Right? So now they can say, you know what, Scott, he's the guy who wrote the book on bullying and confidence. Yep. Well, maybe not the book, but a book on it. Okay. Because there's probably some, some other ones out there. But mine drops. If there, we it hit bestseller status in the pre-sale mm-hmm. in the ebook. Yep. And I'm working on getting that paperback out. Ebook will drop on uh, Wednesday. So if you've purchased a copy of my book, Samurai Parenting Secrets. Seven Steps to Give Your Child More Focus, Confidence, and Discipline from a Martial Arts Expert. You will get that delivered to you via Kindle uh, on Wednesday, and then the option to buy the paperback should be a couple days later. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, my man Nick, he's already ordered. He's excited. I know it. Nick's a supporter of me, has been for years. I love him. Awesome. Uh, what else happens this week? I talked about Buzz Berry. I talked, mm-hmm. about, talked about the book coming out. Yeah. Also, it's the 40th anniversary of an extremely significant day this week which is is that your birthday my birthday boom oh snap some people would say i'm a narcissist okay how do you feel about it (laughs) why do you giggle at that um i wouldn't say you're a narcissist but you do have a good opinion of yourself (laughs) well there's two types of narcissists actually yeah so there's a there's a narcissist and then there's a healthy narcissist right okay uh the narcissist in the classic sense is uh is not a good thing to be Right, you love yourself, obviously, mm-hmm. but uh, but they have a warped, grandiose opinion of themselves. Okay, they tend not to achieve goals. Okay, yet they still maintain this grandiose opinion. Mm-hmm. Right, they don't have the ability to empathize with others. Okay, right. So I feel on the flip side, yeah, I love me some Scott Swisher. There's no lie. We know this by things like that. However, I do feel I have an ability to empathize with people, and mm-hmm. I feel I think people would say. Uh, I'm the type of cat who goes after his goals yes. and achieves, right? I don't get easily deterred. Right. So um, anyway, getting a little psychological on you. Let's talk about some bullying. This week we shared a video, and it's making the rounds. It's going everywhere now, Yeah. Uh, this Burger King video. I see it on the news uh, or on news feeds a lot. The mm-hmm. one bit of news that I, I read. 
and uh, we were ahead of the curve. As soon as we found out about it, we shared this video because I thought it was very powerful. Yeah. It's a powerful video. We shared it on our Facebook page. However, it's powerful in the sense that it made an impact with me when I watched it. But now, a week later, the more I've thought about it, the more I've watched it, um, it it's, the great thing about it is it can bring up conversation about the subject of bullying. Yeah, for sure. So tell us a little bit about your thoughts on the video. And maybe even give everybody kind of a rundown, you know, cliff notes, 100 foot, 1,000 foot view, rather, of the uh, video. Well, the overall concept of the video was um, how many people would step in to step into a situation where a kid is getting bullied and how many people react to a, a, a Whopper junior that got bullied. I think it was like a high school junior and a, 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 a junior, junior Whopper. Yes. Right? Um, and most of the people didn't say anything when the kid was getting bullied, but then when they found out their burger was smashed, they went up to the counter and were like all mad about it. So that was the overall point of the whole video. And some people did stand up for the kid. Some people, you know, uh, I guess consoled him afterwards. Um, but the majority of people didn't, but I think it was like almost every person that had a smash burger went, uh, went up and said something. And then they were like, Oh, well. You know, did you see this burger getting bullied? Oh, yeah, and then, like, they have a whole conversation about it. Yeah. That's so, the rundown. Yeah, it, according to the video, if memory serves, it was 12% of people. So it was like a hidden camera thing, candid camera deal. Yeah, yeah, Where, you know, they go back to their seat, and the, the burger in their hand that's in the wrapper still is all smashed to pieces. Yeah. And as they're going back to their seat, they're watching this interaction between high school kids where one kid is getting soda dumped on them and those types of things. Mm. Um, and, yeah, 12% uh, of the people who had the smashed burger actually went and confronted the bully, whereas almost everybody, as you say, um, was mad about their burger being smashed up. Yeah. Right? So it had an impact. You're like, wow, you know, we're watching a, a human being get treated poorly. And you can tell by the looks on the people's faces, at least that they showed on the video, they, they saw what was happening and they were uneasy with it. Yeah. But they didn't do anything about it. Um, but then they were irate with the hamburger. So now, you know, the thing is, you know, we're, we're willing to stand up about the abuse of an inanimate object hamburger we're going to eat but not, you know, the abuse of a person right next to us. Yeah. That's the implications. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think it's that easy, man. I don't think that um, we can just say these people are callous or society has become callous because adults aren't stepping in to stop a junior from getting bullied. Yeah, I don't think it's that at all. There's a lot more that goes into the decision to do something. There is, absolutely. And you know, not to bring up a terrible subject, but we've probably talked about it before on our live show, on our audio podcast but the kitty genovese phenomenon do you recall that yeah one, that was in uh, new york when there was tons of witnesses to what happened and yes no one came forward yeah a woman being uh, brutally raped and murdered in mm -hmm. her apartment complex hallway yeah and uh, you know people didn't call the police till like 40 minutes after the event started yeah and uh, again it's easy to jump to conclusions and say oh well i would do something different if i was there right it's easy to jump to that conclusion but i don't think um I don't think people know what they're going to do until they're in a given situation. Yeah, it's not that simple. It's not that simple, right? So, um, you know, I'll share a story. It wasn't too long ago, and I was in the wrong. This is a story where I was in the wrong, but I was at Walmart mm. down the street. And I noticed while I was in the checkout line, I was there with my son and uh, wife. And I'm in the checkout line, and there was a guy with his wife, and he was just being obnoxious. And maybe I'm being a bully because I'm using my audio form now to hurl insults. But he was just arguing and complaining about things in the line at Walmart that aren't really inside the control of the employees there. You know, there wasn't enough staff yeah. to his demand. You know, he's going to Walmart to, you know, get discount on food and everything else, but then he exp you know, he's paying, you know, coach prices but wants first class service, right? Yeah. Uh, and he's argu he's just being argumentative and, and very loud about it. And, uh, and so I wasn't paying too much mind to the guy. He's, you know, 15 feet from me probably. Yeah. You know, I'm in one line, he's in the next. But then I did notice there was some kind of kerfuffle, if you will, between him and a woman that was in line with him. And okay. he's with his wife. This guy's with his wife, or I presume who was his wife. And he's arguing with the lady, and he couldn't, I couldn't remember, doesn't remember what it was, but he called her a bigot. Okay. Right? And she was shocked by it. And I was a little stunned by it, too, because I didn't, from what I was watching, again, I don't, it was a while ago, I don't remember what was being said. Mm -hmm. But it didn't appear to, because the man's wife was not of um, Caucasian descent. Okay. He was. Mm -hmm. His wife's not. So I guess that's why he was calling the woman a bigot um, in protection okay. of his wife. Right? And it just seemed way out of place. Yeah. And it was a man being verbally aggressive to a woman. 
And I had every opportunity to step in and, and uh, say something, and honestly, I didn't. I probably should have, more on a moral standpoint. So now you catch your boy Scott talking about where he slipped. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid to talk about it, Andy. In fact, in my book, every darn chapter is going to talk about some of the mistakes I've made. Yeah. Right? But they're not failures unless, if you learn from them, they're not failures. Yes. Learn that from Tony Robbins. So anyway, I didn't step in. And I think what went through my mind when I made the decision not to step in there and confront the guy was uh, probably going through the heads of some of these people in Burger King. Okay. So let's talk about some of the reasons why one might not want to confront a bully in service of somebody else. Why they would not, right? Mm -hmm. Because what happens if, in this case with this man at Walmart, he was a guy 50 years old, not in very good physical shape. Okay. Went through my head, what if I say something to this man and he runs up on me? Mm-hmm. I'm just there trying to buy a cantaloupe and some fresh food with my, my, my son and wife there. If he's acting in an unhinged way and then he approaches us, I'm immediately going to go in defense mode. Yeah. Because I don't know what this man's intentions are. I got my wife and my son there. So what, would, what do you think would happen? Uh, what are some of the negative things that would happen if I got in a fist fight with the man at Walmart? Well, one, you could, get, you could hurt the person pretty badly. Um, you could get arrested, charged possibly. Okay. Um, showing Gavin, I mean, fighting right in front of Gavin, not really great. No. You know, and I don't know. That's, that's all I have for that. Yeah, I, I have pretty much yeah. some of the implications could be injury Yeah. to myself, to him, my family. You know, if he rum rushes into me and we start tussling and I knock over the cart with my son in it. Yeah. Horrible, right? Mm. Embarrassment of my position in the community as somebody who makes good decisions, mm-hmm. um, I mean, we saw it a, you know, a month ago at the Ramshackle tournament that we talked about on our show a couple weeks ago. People were being verbally abusive towards me. And a big reason why I didn't respond to any because I knew their threats were baseless, number one, because if a bunch of martial artists are making threats at you, you know, it's like, you know, I don't threaten people. If I have an intention yeah. of doing something, I'm going to do it, right? Um, so I knew that they were making hollow threats. But uh, I took into account, like, you know, I'm supposed to be an upstanding member of the community and be able to control my anger, and that's what I'm teaching these kids and these young people, and that's what you're doing as well, Andy. Mm-hmm. And if I'm off there flying off the handle and, you know, throwing blows with some cat at, at Walmart, it's going to be very hard to explain that behavior. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. There's legal repercussions. I don't care. Everybody's like, oh, well, it would have been self-defense, Scott, if he came up and swung at you. No, it wouldn't be. Because self-defense would be if this man came and took a swing at me, I have to... Skedaddle. I have to make every attempt to escape before responding physically. And if I do respond physically, I can only do so to such a degree that I can resume my escape. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Which that depends on. No, I was pointing because I was going to make the point. Yeah. That also changes depending on what state, which state you're in. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does, but it's going to be, you know. You still run the risk. Yeah, so police arrive on the scene. Woo, woo, woo. That's my police noise. Yeah. You like that? Mm. And they look at the scene. You know, 40-year-old martial arts guy, martial arts master, some might say. I've been Mm. doing it since I was 13. Yeah. Um, In good shape because he flexes all the time on live video versus out of shape 60-year-old man who's somewhat crazy. Yeah. A fist fight occurs. Chances are. I'm going to prevail. Who knows? He might get me. He might know how to box. He might, he might have some sk- skills. He might, like, do, like, dim mock on me or something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he does Tai Chi or Kung Fu and, you know, can, like, touch you and knock you out. Mm-hmm. Chances are I'm going to defeat the man. Okay. So how am I going to explain that to police? Yeah. Right? So legal repercussions, lawsuits, all these types of things. Now, who knows? I could have stepped in there and said to the guy, hey, man, ease up, chill out. And he could have just sat there and, and eased up and chilled out. Yeah. And in all reality, I watched it. After he made the statement of, being, uh, of her being a bigot, he didn't say anything further, and neither she, did she. It, it, that was the end of it. Mm-hmm. So it didn't require me to step in at that point. However, you know, I look back on that one, and I see that as an opportunity where, um, you know, I let my thinking get the better of me. Okay. Your thoughts? No, I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> the comment. Yeah, somebody, on, somebody commented that, nah, he doesn't box. And I don't know who that is, but, yeah, he probably doesn't box. Yeah. So. <laughs> so anyway, you were saying, sir, before we were de- de- derailed by a funny comment on our live audio f- or Facebook uh, feed. No, I totally lost it. It's gone. So <laughs> so anyway, but then there's the other side. You know, we shared this story on, on 
a live broadcast a while ago, probably going back two years, mm. when I was outside of an establishment in Clayton, North Carolina, with uh, two of my friends, and they were both ex- extremely accomplished fighters. Mm. And I was the, of the three of us, I was the most decrepit and least dangerous of the three, if yeah. you were to get in a tussle, in my yeah. opinion. Gustavo being one of them. Man, right? Gustavo's real. Yeah, <laughs> so. Gustavo's extremely real. And a wonderful guy, but he's real. And I'm there with Danny, six foot two, you know, uh, world silver medalist in Muay Thai in his day. Could throw hands, bro. Yeah. Right? And we see this man physically abusing a woman, and we stepped in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, utilizing my linguistical skills, my ability to, to spit game, I was able to talk this man out of um, engaging in the behavior he was of beating the woman without having physical repercussions. Yeah. However, he ran out the truck like he was going to fight us, <clears throat> right? Okay. He's going to run up on all three of us for a second. Um, and that could have gone big because he was an unhinged, drunk maniac. Yeah. And again, you know, so the three of us set upon the man and beat on him a little bit. And uh, police arrive. It's going to be hard to explain that behavior. Yeah. And the, the thing about it, the thing that was frustrating about that situation is we, we did step in. We did the right thing, mm. uh, my friends and I. And we stopped the situation from happening. But... But when the police did arrive on the scene, mm. well, first, I went in and told the people at the establishment that a domestic violence incident is about to happen because I saw it developing via the verbal arguments. Yeah. And uh, people who worked at the establishment decided to come out and watch. I told them, I directly said, call 911. This is about to go. Right? Yeah. And then I go back outside, and now he's got his hands on the woman, right? Yeah. Um, however, when the police did arrive, because one of the bystanders, not one of the employees, I believe, but some bystander who was making their way to their car, mm. called the police. Police arrive. And, uh, you know, the situation had been calmed down. There was no physical contact, so the police didn't see it. Mm-hmm. And then the woman who was being abused told the police nothing happened. Yeah. Right? So it's just going to be a pattern potentially that, that, that's going to recur in her life. And both myself and my friends put our, our physical being at risk confronting this man. Mm-hmm. Right? Because what if this man ran up and took a swing at us? Right? A fight's a fight. You play with fire, you might get burned. Yeah. You know, what if he's uh, packing heat, man? Yeah, I mean, has a knife, has a gun. You don't know. You know, so um, so all these things have to have to, you know, it's not that easy just to say jump in there in this Burger King situation. You got a bunch of adults, um, you know, how are they going to confront? It's not going to be easy to confront a 16 year old kid and potentially get in a fight with a 16 year old kid in Burger King over a bullying situation. Yeah. So I think it does call, you know, it makes us think. However, we're ignoring the real problems. I think this video is showing one of the symptoms. Mm hmm. Of the real problem. You yeah. follow what I'm saying? No, I'm with you. Because the symptoms, well, what do you think the real, I'm curious because I got my notes. I thought about this. Curious what you think of what the real problems are in this. Where is this bullying stuff? Why is it get, seeming more prevalent? Why is it seeming more extreme? Despite the fact that there's increased focus on it. I mean, we've talked about it for an entire month. There's, a, there's books on it. There's it's in the news every single day, so there's increased focus on it, but it's not fixing the problem. What is the problem? Um, I think that part of the problem is also what is some part of the problem is something that's trying to be used as a, a tool to beat it, and that is social media, yes. in my opinion. Um, and that's just because you know it's all over the place, and you know people are getting videos of fights all the time. No one steps in. Um, you see it all the time on you know, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Um, so I think that's part of it because you get kind of disconnected almost yes. from it. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's going to be one of the issues, though. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The social media is the problem, uh, one of the problems. Or maybe not the problem, but contributing factor. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll go, I'm just going to not beat around the bush. I think the problem is, and all this is it was a staged thing, and, it, and it, this broken video was a stage thing. It wasn't really, kid wasn't really getting bullied. It was, yeah, they were actors, actors, right? Yeah. But the real problem is, uh, and uh, this can be easily taken as me blaming the victim. However, we have to learn to stand up for ourselves. Yeah. We have to, because you can't expect Kitty Genovese. And whenever I do a, a self defense seminar, particularly for women, I tell them one of the things I tell them is that there is no white knight coming to save you. Yeah. And if one does appear, you're lucky because statistics show that they're not. So yeah. if something bad is happened to you, to, happening to you, you are your only savior. You're the only one that you can help see to save yourself. You know, <clears throat> the time I was getting bullied as a kid, even if somebody would have stepped in in a given incident in 
you know, home ec class when somebody's giving me a hard time, if someone would have stepped in and said, hey, stop giving the guy a hard time. Those same kids are going to give me a hard time in the locker room at gym when my white knight's not around. Yeah. So you, we have to learn to stand up for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's really what it, what it comes down to. And I want to talk a little bit about the, why there's an increase in prevalence, but I'm going to have you wax philosophical on that just a moment about your thoughts about what I just dropped on you. With the not defending yourself? Okay, well, in my opinion, that's going to stem from a lack of confidence. And anyone that has ever dealt with trying to build or rebuild their confidence knows that it's not that simple. Um, it's something that takes hard work and a lot of practice and people that believe in you, not just yourself, you know? Yes. And if you're wondering <clears throat> how we can build confidence, how can we build confidence? That's the question. This. Yeah. On my shirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, getting involved in something. Well, there's a, there's a book on it coming out on Wednesday that lays it out for you. Shameless plug. Samurai Parenting Secrets. On Amazon. Two plugs back to back. Yeah, the it's school good. and the book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but there's a process to building confidence, but I agree. Because when, when I decided to change, made that decision to not stand for the bullying anymore, it came because my confidence had been built. Yeah. And when I verbally took a stand, when I first did it, the person I stood up against to verbally knew that without a shadow of a doubt, that if he said one more thing, he was about to enter the Thunderdome. Yeah. Do you know about the Thunderdome? Mad Max. Mad Max. Two men enter, one man leaves. Mm -hmm. Right? So that put an end to it. And then I had to have that conversation over and over again with different bullies over the course of my life. But um, there's something to be said about, about that confident posture and that confidence, that confidence in your own skills mm -hmm. and confidence in uh, your position yeah. and coming across in your tone of voice. So I had an inter <clears throat> interesting situation just yesterday, Andy. Okay. You know me, I'm not an irascible guy. Mm -hmm. However, when, you know, and I will take, it's odd, you know, maybe I get this from my old man, I'll take verbal abuse and things against me, and I'll be able to shake it off. But if it goes against one of my people, I tend to not have such a stringent criteria. Okay. Like, even at the uh, tournament, like, we were laughing about when I, the one time I did bow back against somebody and got slightly confrontational with one of those people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I called the kid a tough guy and told him to, you know, to scram. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most uh, confrontational I got with anybody. It wasn't because what he was saying to me. It's because he said something to, to Eric. Yeah. Right? To one of our competitors. Yeah. So I immediately, like, you know, all bets, you know, at that point. So I do a good job of being able to let things roll off my back when they're coming at me. But when they come at one of my people I care about, I um, tend to get a little more serious. Precisely. Yeah. So anyway, I'm out in the – something my son and I do almost every day is we ride our bikes. Okay. Uh, out in the neighborhood, right? My son's not four yet three and a half or three and three quarters and as we're riding the bikes uh the male you know the paper guy not a paper boy but a guy in a car throwing papers because there's like three people in the neighborhood apparently still get print news yeah i see him tossing papers and he comes flying down the street now we live in a residential neighborhood and i mean to the point where like you hear the squeal of the engine like fast like just hauling gunning it yeah. right and uh, i pull my son to the side of the road because he's my responsibility and i look the car, and he kind of jams on his brakes and then slows down by why it goes by us, right? Mm -hmm. So I just took note of it. And then we're riding, and comes a time this man is coming out of the neighborhood now. Yeah. Same deal, man. He's flying and jams on the brakes. And I had to grab a hold of my son again. And uh, out of anger, I just yelled at him, hey, slow down. And he stopped the car mm -hmm. and with the window rolled down. Okay. And uh, when we started getting to, like, keeping real toe goes wrong territory right now, but I hopped off the bike immediately. So I thought... I thought he was about to step out of his car okay. with my son there, right? And uh, he looks out the window, and he says, what's the problem? I said, you're, fr you're driving in this neighborhood way too fast. Mm -hmm. And he said, I am? And I said, yes. And at that point, he, like, sunk in his chair a little bit, and he apologized. Okay. I was like, okay. And he drove off. Now, ultimately, again, it's my responsibility to take care of my son. Mm -hmm. right, so if this idiot was driving too fast and hit my son, it's my responsibility. Yeah. That's why I was there, and I pulled him away. However, it still was enough to get me irritated. Yeah. Now, who knows? Is this guy? But I do agree. Again, that was it. I, I think he realized by my posture and my tone of voice that if he got out of the car, it was Thunderdome time. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And he had to contend with not only the fact that I was already irritated, but I'm there with my son behind me. So it's going to be like rage level times 10. Yeah. 
That old man rage. Old man rage, yeah. Old man <laughs> strength don't sleep on it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I have a sneaking suspicion when he drives in that neighborhood the next time, he might be driving fast, but if he sees me, if he looks out that windshield and sees me, uh, I guarantee those he's going to pump those brakes real quick. You know, because I stood up in the situation and told him what's a serious... The, now, what does this have to do with bullying? I'm just getting to the point where if I would have come at the guy and not been confident about it, because, you know, when he stopped his car, he was like, oh, it's confrontation time. That's why mm -hmm. he stopped. Yeah. Right? Because he knew what I was saying to him, because he was five feet from me when I yelled it in his open window. Uh -huh. He was looking, he was, oh, it's time to confront. If I would have come at him weak, like, oh, well, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, please don't drive so fast, sir. Mm. I think he's probably getting out of the car at that point. Yeah. Right? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, that or he would have just blown by you and not even cared about what he had to say and just kept doing what, what he was doing. Yes. Because you know? he sees no reason to change because the challenge that has come to him is it wouldn't have been a big deal to him. You know? So there you have it, kids. Learn karate so you can confront male men, newspaper mail delivery men in your neighborhood. Mm. Right? That's our... That's our Not really. <laughs> that's our moral of this story, right? Yeah. Um, so with the real problems, I think we were talking about the real problems. One, that uh. people don't have the confidence or ability to stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you got to join a martial arts program, but you got to do something to increase your own self-worth. Because when you increase... And that's what happened through martial arts. Yeah, I learned how to fight and I learned how to be tough. But my self-worth in increased. Yeah. And I realized I'm not somebody else's doormat or punching bag. I'm not going to allow myself to be used like this. Mm -hmm. So I increased my self-worth. That's our first piece. What are some ways, other than martial arts, Andy, what are some ways that we can increase our self-worth? I mean, I've said it before. Just find something you like and do it. And that's really it, you know, and have people that support you around you. And make it part of your identity. Yeah, and test yourself through it, you know. Um, it, and it should be something that you can test yourself with, in my opinion. Like with martial arts, you can always test yourself. You can try to learn a new form. You can uh, break that board. You can spar somebody, you know. Um, but, yeah, just find something you like, do it, and then test yourself through it and – if you achieved it, then awesome. If not, then you know how to build it up so that you can later. Yes. You know, that's what I think. Yes. We have to start attaching things to our identity that are positive, mm -hmm. right, through the avenue you just discussed. Like I said, making your identity. If, you're, if you play music, you start identifying yourself as a guitarist mm -hmm. or a cellist, whatever it is. That becomes part of your identity. Yeah. You know, we're martial artists. We practice martial arts. It's part of our identity. I'm a father. I'm an American. These are all parts of my identity that I'm proud of. Okay. Right? You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm with you. But the other piece is, uh, I think the other piece overall as a society is the lack of empathy that we've talked about many times. Mm -hmm. There's an overall lack of empathy and in general that's supported by our television programs and our reality TV and, and various avenues and social media, mm -hmm. um, political discourse. It's a lack of empathy. And then... Folks realize this and they want to increase the empathy of society, but they go about it in ways that shows that they're not empathetic either. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about, or is this a riddle now? <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm a little lost, but I haven't had my coffee today, so I'm a little slow, slow on my feet today. You should have had that bulletproof coffee, homie. Oh, yeah? Coffee, butter, C8, MCT oil. I had coffee at 6 a.m. this morning. I don't even know what that oil was that you told me about. It's a... C8 MCT? Yeah, it's a, a brain-boosting oil. So I have coffee at 6. Do I seem like a man who's in need of energy boosts right now? No. 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 <laughs> at all. So what I'm talking about, the lack of empathy, is I'm going to get into some, some potentially choppy water from a political standpoint. Okay. But what we found, what I've seen, is that people who want you to be empathetic towards their plight. Oftentimes, sometimes, they go about in a way where they show a lack of empathy for your position. Okay. For example, out there, I play, for those out there, I play miniature war games. I take these little models and I paint them up, put them on a table, it's like chess on steroids. Okay. That's what I do for a hobby. You know this. Mm -hmm. Live audience knows this. And because it's part of my hobby, I follow the news on that a little bit, like new products coming out, new strategies, those, thing, those things. There's a talk now in the Warhammer 40K, and that's the game I play, community that it's, uh, it's sexist. It's a sexist hobby. And uh, a feminist group 
I don't know which one, is now getting against it. PETA was against it a while ago. Yeah, they wanted all the fur removed from the uh, plastic models. Yes, not like actual real fur. Of yeah. fur. They had, you know, one of the models was a sculpt of a Viking, and he had fur on his back, fake fur, sculpted in, and PETA wanted that removed because it was, you know. Advocating the use of animal skins. Yes. And now the, uh, this feminist group is mad because uh, there's one army that's all females, but the other armies don't have females in them, right? That's not I mean, necessarily true. But that's, but that's their argument, yeah. right? And when they're going about this argument saying that, that you, you know, it's sexist, you know, because there's not a bunch of females, and you guys are a bunch of chauvinists. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they're trying to force, you know, the gamer group to be empathetic, but they're doing it by insulting them and saying they're not, they're a bunch of chauvinists. Yeah. Um, you know, a while ago I was accused, um, I was in a community group, a... Um, It's in an organization that is about community service. Okay. And one of the bylaws is that there's not any religion advocated in the group. You okay. can be religious. You can be a member of any religion and be part of the group. But, but the don't actual, try to bring it in front of everybody. Yes, because it's a melting pot of different cultures, this group, right? Mm. Um, and it, our little, I guess, uh, organization, our uh-huh. little chapter, voted on whether we should say um, a Christian prayer before every meal. And I was against it. Mm-hmm. Even though I've grown up, you know, praying, you know, having Christian prayers before meals, I was against it because it was against, it was in violation of the rules mm-hmm. of the large organization. And because I said no, I was accused of being, a, literally being a bigot. And, you know, they said, you have to understand where we're coming from, and you're nothing but a bigot. And it's like, well, you have to understand where I'm coming from. So what I'm saying is that, you know, there's a lack of empathy in our society, and the ways that we're trying to improve the empathy um, is by calling people names. It doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, like, you're not going to insult me and then get me to be happy about something with you. Precisely. You know, <laughs> like, that's just not how it works. Precisely. Because part of empathy is understanding, even if you disagree with a person's position, mm-hmm. you have to understand and uh, that they came to it via their own logic. Mm-hmm. There may be flaw. You may feel their logic is flawed. Uh, but making insults and, and attacking them verbally isn't going to move them towards your position. No. Right, so if anything, it'll push it farther from it. Exactly. So I think that's uh, part of it too, where you know, because a lot of the groups that are being bullied, I've seen a couple things about bullying. Uh, Monica Lewinsky had one, well, recently a video about bullying, and it was mostly basically bullying from a cultural standpoint, making fun of this group or people make fun of that group, um, and things of that nature. And again, she's one of her thing is to be empathetic, but I don't know. The video made it seem like one group, one particular segment of society was against everybody else. And it's like, well, yeah. that's not going to really pull those people to, uh, to your position. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, anyway, that's about all. We didn't really cover much today. No. I didn't talk that much. Sorry, Facebook. Sorry. We let you down. <laughs> Shock and all. So, Lizbeth Costello, what's going on? She agrees. That, maybe she doesn't agree, but she said it was a shock and all tactic I used with... Uh, old male guy yeah pretty yeah. much um, and Nicholas on a live broadcast is saying sometimes it's hard to tell if people are just playing around or if they're really mad and hurt it makes it hard to tell if you need to jump in mm-hmm. and he's talking about in these social situations that's another one too yeah right because um, we don't really know the story I think we have to err on the side of you know when you see violent acts happening call the authorities um, or if you're capable and prepared and it's within your ethics you know step in and put yourself at risk, like I did with the situation of the domestic violence happening in the parking lot. Uh-huh. Um, if it was just words that the man was saying to her, maybe not. Um, but, again, by, well, it started off with words in that situation, and I knew where those words were leaving, leading because I've been around you know, the martial arts game and the fight game for a minute, and I can tell when someone's about to get physical. Yeah. So anyway, that's our piece for you guys today. When it comes to confronting bullies, when it comes to self-defense, what I always tell people, Andy, is that when uh, you have to... Come up with a Mendoza line and an idea of what fits in your ment- your morality. Because mm-hmm. I can't tell, you know, I know how I'm going to tell my son how to take care of situations if people are treating him poorly. Yeah. It's going to f- not bother me from a moral standpoint, but it, other people it may. Other people may think that my, what I, my, the advice I give my son is maybe not heavy-handed enough. I don't mm-hmm. know. But that's up to you to decide. Yeah. You right? have to figure out these are the things I will accept, these are the things I absolutely will not accept, and then have a hard line between them. Yep. You know, no gray area. Absolutely. 
Um, so anyway, that's our piece for today. Uh, next month, we're kicking off a really awesome set of podcasts that are really intriguing. Anybody who works with kids should be tuning in. Anybody who has kids should be tuning in. Each week, we're going to be talking about essentially the stages of development for kids. Mm. And Andy and I are going to talk, and Andy's uh, knowledgeable about this fact, so he's going to be taking the lead on it about, because you work with kids all the time, you study it, Mm -hmm. you're in the lab, man, always going after it. We're going to talk about, you might be wondering as a parent, scratching your head, why does my three-year-old do this at home? Why are they doing these types of behaviors? I'll tell you. And he's going to break it down. Then the week after, we're going to talk about that next stage, the five- and six-year-old stage. Because kids have different things and different goals and different aspirations at that age than they did at 3 and 4. Yep. And then through the 7 through 9 and the 10 through 14, we're going to break it down because these are the age groups that we have divided in our martial arts program. Mm. Because kids who are in 5 and 6 are generally, a lot of them are, they're in that same stage of development. So you're going to go through those each week. We're going to have a new one. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait. Yep. Anyway, guys, I will see you on Wednesday. Country Superstars, 102.3, 7 a.m. The Buzz. Nice. See you guys.